Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Tuesday, it is August 8th of 2023, and I'm really happy to have you with me here today. I would like to invite you to please subscribe, stick with us here, and we go over everything to do with cruising and tips for traveling. We cover a lot here every single day, so join us, and also if you appreciate my videos, would you please give this one a thumbs up? If you are new around here, I want you to know that usually we have a lot of video footage stuck into all of my videos. We talk um, and we show a lot about what we're talking about. This week I am not at home and so just stick with me this week and stay with me on the news, okay? I want to start off by letting you know what happens if a ship has to rescue someone. Do they take the ship immediately back to that home port? What do they do? So the Mardi Gras just had to rescue a couple on a sailboat. Uh, the Mardi Gras is just on their cruise um, round trip this week out of um, Port Canaveral and they were contacted by the Coast Guard that there was a sailboat. So they looked for it, it took like two hours to find that sailboat. They deployed one of their lifeboats and went and rescued those people, brought them on board and the medical team of course is taking good care of them. But the Mardi Gras is indeed continuing on their sailing. Their next port stop is going to be in Aruba. They're not ending the cruise soon or anything. I know that if these um, people have to disembark before they get back to the cruise, before they get back to their home port, that they will be disembarked otherwise. Just wanted to bring you up to date and let you know how that happens. I know there's a lot of excitement when a cruise ship has to rescue someone at sea. And isn't it nice? I think it's wonderful that cruise ships are around to help do these kind of things as well as all the other kind of ships out there. The next thing, this is kind of big to me and I'm wondering like, um, if it means anything or no, not really. I'm always interested when there is a shakeup um, in the different cruise lines. And a gentleman named Stefano Borzone has been the Senior Vice President of Princesses Port Operations and Development. He's been with Carnival Cruise Lines for about the whole corporation for about five years and he is going to step down. The report said to take another opportunity. So I kind of wonder, you know, there's always um, shakeups. There's a lot going on at Princess right now. I would submit by the big changes that they are making. And I wonder how much um, people are moving around um, simply because of their career and simply because they would rather be somewhere else. So let me know what you think in the comments. One thing about the port guides, and I am really grateful to Jeffrey. He's got his blog, Cruising for One. So he puts lots of great information there, even if it's not, even if you're not cruising solo. So take a look at his blog, just Google it, Cruising for One, and he also has a brand new YouTube channel that he um, puts videos to, and so give him a follow there as well. But he pointed out, and I did not know this, that on the port guides, the information, they are not keeping it up to date. I honestly think that if Princess is not going to keep those port guides up to date, they need to take them down. Jeffrey realized on his last cruise that the port, um, the port um, agent, which is who you contact, if you are going to be late back to the ship, you call if you've got a problem, need help with something unexpected, that's who you call. And he realized that they are not up to date. He brought it to the attention of the um, crew on board and they said it was no big deal. Now to me that's not okay because every time when we are going to get off a cruise ship, I always I always take a picture of the port guide, um, sorry, the port agent so that if something happens with us, I know who to contact. I do that even if we are going to be on a princess excursion, just because you never know what's gonna happen and I want to be prepared. So with the knowledge that that is not accurate information, that um, worries me. <laughs> uh, like what else is out there that's not accurate? Because you know, you trust a cruise line when they put information out, when you're visiting a port, you trust them for it to be accurate. So um, let's hope that they're going to work on updating those sooner than later. The other thing that I thought about with um, this gentleman's job and it's not necessarily his fault you know the director of the port operations and development there was all of the trouble that they had in the port at the beginning of the season up in seattle some they had in vancouver with really long embarkation and disembarkation times some of those embarkation times were just over the top so um, hopefully things will go smoother. Like I said, it's not necessarily this gentleman's fault, but we do have things changing. And there's a gentleman named Wes Milken that has already been um, a vice president rather than a senior vice president, and he will be, be filling Mr. Borzone's position. Did I say that right? I hope I said his name right. The next thing that I think it's important for us to talk about is yesterday I told you about the Princess um, credit card that you can get on board credit with. 
and um, I've gotten a lot of emails about this and people are wondering if they can pay for their cruise and then immediately use that um, promise $200 of onboard credit. Here's what I would think about just knowing what I know about credit card companies and how long it can sometimes take them to post credits. If I were going on a cruise and I were going, you know, anytime in the next few months and I wanted to use that, I would apply for that card today and hurry up and use that credit. Um, you, you know, you charge $500 worth so that I could get the points and qualify for that $200 of onboard credit. But I would think you're going to have to wait for the credit card cycle to post. So if you pay for your cruise like on August 15th, don't plan to use that onboard credit the 30th if your credit card doesn't close before then, okay? Give it a little bit of extra time. So um, if you're going to do that, apply for the card, spend the money, get that onboard credit qualified for, and then you can apply it when you need to use it, okay? But don't leave it to the last minute and don't try to put them too close together. Alrighty, the next thing that I think is really important that we need to talk about is MSC. Because we have been talking about the additional charges that Princess has been putting out, we know that um, Carnival Corporation, Norwegian, everybody is adding charges. It's not just Princess. We just talked about Princess so much here that we are all very familiar with it and um, familiar with the cruise line. But MSC Seaside is the first cruise ship that people are reporting, and I'm guessing it's on all the MSC ships, that if you want an additional entree, you are going to have to pay for it. Now, a little while ago, um, the cruise lines um, with Carnival Corporation rolled out that I believe it's the third entree you have to start paying $5 for. So clearly, um, cruise lines are moving this direction. So I want to hear from you in the comments. Do you think that it is because they're trying to cut down on waste? They're trying to save um, like money by not giving away so much food and then also charging for it. They will earn money on that. Um, and some people also suggest that maybe it'll make people just not order what they don't really want. They just order it because they can and then um, they either eat it or they don't, but it will cut down on how much people eat. So tell me in the comments what you think it is or if it's something entirely different, okay? And then um, finally, um, I wanted to let you know that um, today in the news, cruise news, I noticed that they were talking about Princess releasing their South America and Antarctica cruises for late 2024 and early 2025. There's a couple of things. Um, when we were on the Island Princess, I did a whole video talking to you about the amazing itineraries that they've got, and I have mentioned it here and there. So I want you to stick with me every day because I go over a lot of information and so much information that you can't just do talk about it once. I get a lot of questions. So with those Antarctica and South America sailings, they've got two um, Antarctica sailings on the Sapphire Princess in January of 2025. I noticed that. I believe they're in December as well of 2024. But a really important thing to note, so listen, if you are wanting to go to Antarctica and you really like the sailings that Princess is currently running, that takes you from Buenos Aires clear around to um, Santiago or the other direction, they are not going to be doing that at the end of 2024 and 2025. They are going to have 17 day sailings, but they are going to be round trip from Buenos Aires. You still get that four day um, like cruising in Antarctica, everything stays the same, but you're not going to see the other side of South America. So if you really want to do that, take a look at the cruises, and I am really happy to help you book that and find one that I think is the very best for you. Gordon and I have done that before. I've got a group that is going on January 20th of 2024, and so if you book with me, you get extra onboard credit with it, but, um, I just wanted to let you know that things are changing. So if you see an itinerary that you love, you should jump on it and go if you can. Princess is really kicking up their game and so is Holland America. I'm going to add with the cruises that they are offering to South America. They've got a lot of amazing cruises going and so if there is somewhere that's been on your bucket list, this is a good time to think about it. Like Holland America even has one that goes on the Amazon. If you can believe it, like how cool is that? And so um, I can talk to you more about those another day if you're interested, but there's a lot of remarkable itineraries. So that's everything I've got for you. Will you um, please, like I asked, subscribe, stick with us. If you are on a cruise ship, send me updates for um, how everything is going. I love to hear about that. Oh, and let me add, I forgot to tell you, um, I really appreciate a Let's Go family member letting me know because the stories that I found, I didn't see it. Apparently, um, it sounds like, and I don't know if it is still flooded, but yesterday she sent me an email. Thank you, Trish. She's got a channel also traveling, Trish Thiel. So give her a follow as well here on YouTube. 
but um, she said that the trail to Nugget Falls is flooded. Now, I did see today that a lot of the water levels there at, around the Mendenhall Lake, the flooding is receding. So um, I'm really anxious to hear. A few of you have emailed and I'm anxious to hear from more of you that will be in Juneau and can give us a really good um, lay of the land and how it's going there. So keep watching and I'll let you know how all that's going. But um, I really appreciate you all and I will be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.